I'm gonna do a quick little video. I usually don't do videos like this, but I found it kind of compelling. It kind of plays into some of the things that I talk about on this channel. So I'm talking about the Vince Staples show. For those that haven't seen it, it's on Netflix. I should go check it out. <sighs> okay. First thing I want to talk about, I watched this a couple hours ago. I wanted a little bit of time to like adjust my thoughts and kind of gather how I felt about it and kind of some of the different things and kind of similarity that I've seen between other shows. And I'm going to try to make this video a little more engaging because I know using my videos are just me talking and I might add different, you know, I might reference different articles or talk about different pictures or any type of relevant information that's, you know, that goes with the topic for this one I'm gonna try to do that because there's gonna be a lot of uh, I wouldn't say concrete type of um, criticism about it and I do have a little bit of some pros and cons with it um, I think I watched Sway in the Morning's interview concerning you know Vince Staples regardless of this show then I think I just read the GQ article about you know him creating the show and everything so I got kind of a okay, I kind of read some other articles here and there, but none of them were really as noteworthy as those two. So with that being said, I'm going to get to the background and kind of my personal thoughts about how Vince created this show and his creative process and his, some of the messages he tried to convey. But for the most part, it's starting off with episode one. It kind of took me for a surprise a little bit. I wasn't really expecting him to come out of the gate tackling certain subjects or the more I would say taboo especially from a person that because of his background and for those that don't know his background I'm not going to sit here and do a whole A through Z throughout this whole entire life this is not a you know that type of video you can search it up on you know on YouTube or any other media for that type of information but to make a long story short comes from a rough background so he talks about this in various different interviews again i'm not going to add every single clip if you're searching for this type of video you know y'all know the ones i'm talking about where they got to reference every single clip and i'm not editing that much so i'm not doing all that but it has been said that he's been in multiple interviews you can go watch on youtube i'll try to add some links in the description just to help y'all out a little bit, but I've been following Vince for a while. As far as music wise, on and off, I just recently got caught back up listening to one or two of his albums released in the last couple years that I'm kind of unfamiliar with because I was dealing with my own life stuff. But with the first episode, it's kind of hard to really relate every single emotion I have about the show, too because of the relatability. I can relate to this show in many different ways. And I think a lot of people aren't really used to seeing somebody who has to do with the consequences of this lifestyle in a more personal way compared to what they've seen from different types of people like in a black community, especially how we're portrayed on different media, TV, in movies, it's either the three character types, really more, but three mainly is, you know, usually someone of that's a complete, I don't know, maniac, either way that's worried about guns and just, just trying to complete, complete, just trying to upscale, complete mayhem all the fucking time. I don't know exactly how to say that, but that's how they portray us as he's like, savage crazy gun toting people that is one of that that it is almost suicidal to a certain degree there's one character side you have another one that's more of a straight and narrow kind of a i'm trying not to get too controversial oh there's so many different black actors that have fell into this kind of i don't know never do no wrong almost asexual archetype of always do the right thing and they kind of play into that stereotype of what black people quote unquote should be 
you know, weighing heavily on respectability politics and playing into the good graces of other races by going out of their ways to prove that they're not like the others, <sighs> which is a whole nother subject for a whole different time. But the way he's portrayed in this episode is you can really see how even him as an artist, how he's has to navigate these channels of dealing with the repercussions of living a more destructive lifestyle, how he has lived that destructive lifestyle in some way, but he still struggles internally and externally with how the world still views him in his light because of where he came from, where he still resides in certain pockets. Because of that, oh my goodness, it was hilarious. I want to say that first and foremost, if you don't have a very dry or just a sick sense of humor, I find joy in a lot of different sick scenarios or more serious scenarios, especially as an African American male. Sometimes all you do is going to just laugh at situations because if you don't, it's, it's just going to destroy you or it's going to lead you down a dark path that you might not come out of without scars for a lifetime. So, it was funny in a very personal way. I feel like a lot of black people will probably find that, especially black males. And then it's, it's kind of hard to find a show with a protagonist that is not, for lack of better terms, this doesn't have a backbone or doesn't have any type of animosity towards anybody. We get these kind of, I don't want any trouble under any circumstances type people playing these main protagonist roles because we have some people in the black media outlet the only one portrayed black people in this good light as we're not like how we seen how other people see us on tv and stuff or how they how they cover us all these different types of reasons for trying to portray black people in a certain like kind of like the bill Cosby type like thing to where the way he criticized Eddie Murphy, if you watch Eddie Murphy Delirious comedy special, he references how Bill Cosby called him and told him to kind of stop cussing and discussing certain type of subjects that are relevant to his generation compared to the previous generation who had more of a mission to simulate into white culture and be seen as equals, but in our generation, we have a rejection of that. Or in his generation, I would say Eddie Murphy is on my parents' generation. He had more of a, of a rejection or a struggle with that. As he had a lot of different artists that were kind of falling back into their more natural roots of how different black people across the whole entire world and how their cultures in different parts of the world kind of conflict you know similar in different ways even though we were born in different areas i'm not going to go too deep into this topic but if you look at kind of the first episode and how even people who look different who experience different things all come to a common place and how it's a sick place i don't know people i feel like people have this argument about jail how it's it's not really portrayed or any type of like even mental facilities you know, mental health facilities and stuff, how it's not portrayed as, as bad as it really is. Like, it's really that bad. Even on shows like 60 Days In, 60 Days In, they don't really portray or show you certain things. And I think even in one episode, I can't, I can't remember exactly what episode it was or what season it was, but it was one character that was talking he was like i gotta get out of here he cut off the program i think he they gotta do like a certain little hand signal into the camera in the cell or something or when they're out in the child hall and then they can like get basically get a free pass to get out of there so he did that and he explained kind of how they're not showing every single second of that show is edited is cut to be you know tv approved and this and that it's not, and I think in that particular jail, it was in Georgia. I don't think I don't think it was in Atlanta, but it was in some type of city or town or something that was close to Atlanta. It was in a certain place that's a little more wild than you probably expected it to be. 
So take that as you will. But my main point before I start getting too deep into other subjects, this is a very relevant show to how I would say for someone that has lived that has kind of lived in a type of lifestyle to where he has been on both sides of the fence it hits a little different because we don't get that type of archetypes half the time we always get like I said the goody two shoes type of guy but with someone that has treaded the line between good and bad and how he deals with you know his consequences it is really interesting how it's explored in this show from a young point of view and not from a older point of view because it's not that many younger people in our generation that are being able to produce their own shows or being or able to tell certain things that like we do have shows like insecure and shows like atlanta shows like that but they're always told with very I would say predictable characters to a certain degree. I say it's more focused on what happens to that character in a more reactatory way compared to Vince Staples. It's more like it's him and the world both interacting with each other. It's a push and pull thing. As Vince is trying to achieve these certain goals, as we move on from episode one, any kind of doubt is a bullet in more ways than one figuratively and however you want to phrase it and how violence is used as a comedy how even in these extreme stressful situations that he finds himself in he always has this kind of deadpan sense of humor and attitude about everything as if he has kind of either came to peace with the fact that his life is always in danger or he is always in these uncomfortable situations to the point where the more uncomfortable the situation, the more comfortable he is. Even though he does show a level of stress, it's not to the point where he can't handle it or he breaks character. I think in episode one is probably the most, I see out of normal emotion we see Vince in, in his music and in the interview, which I feel like most people usually see Vincent when it comes to how he displays his art it's always through music first and foremost and then an interview where we get his answer his personality and his lifestyle behind the music this is probably our first time seeing Vince act out different and we see him in different situations where we can see his emotional range and this does more on his acting because I feel like it's, it's, you can tell he just started out acting. He has been doing it. He's not exactly a veteran in it, but at the same time, he's not a spring chicken. He's like in the middle. I feel like he's still honing his crab when it comes to acting, but I definitely see his writing skills and his, I don't know if he did any directing in this, but his writing skills for sure are definitely showing. It's, it, it, it's on the level of, I would say, it reminds me a lot of the Dave Chappelle show and how episodic it is and how you deal with these complex subjects and deeply personal situations in this show. But on the flip side, you also get to see how it clashes with the modern age and how this isn't coming from a boys in the hood standpoint. This isn't coming from a minister society standpoint. He is trying to convey a certain point kind of like how John Singleton was in those movies and touched on certain subjects some more than others when it comes to how heavy handed he wants to be but at the same time he has kind of an ambiguous I would say almost nonchalant attitude about some of the situations he finds us in finds himself in like the episode with a family reunion when it comes to how Vince acts with different generations of black people especially the younger generation because i think we got two episodes or maybe one if i remember correctly um and how he deals with the fact that 
he might take a more I wouldn't say quote unquote passive role because he does play the part the primary role in some aspects of him continuing that cycle of violence and kind of this stereotype of hurting people hurt people really want to say stereotype when it comes to this type of I would say quote unquote media in this specific example regarding this show is because you can kind of see how certain aspects and certain traits from Vince's family and his peers around him affect him and how he operates regarding them and how he chooses to interact with them like when you see in jail for some people they might not understand certain jokes and certain little things he's doing now he talks how he's trying to get himself out of that situation i was finding it completely hilarious because i've actually seen the witnesses first-hand experience witness certain people try to do this not exactly in that exact um situation regarding being incarcerated but even on the street in school and on jobs it's it's those black folks really have certain things that only we can get when it comes to how black people act in certain situations and that's kind of how why some people are quote unquote shocked or having this kind of oh my gosh he's this is so revolutionary attitude about it because he probably never seen it on film outside of a bunch of kids at a lunch table or, or this overhearing a bunch of young kids walking down the street or in school or just in some type of some type of situation or situation in time where they can give their opinion about certain things like we always even on the internet we always get to hear from people of an older generation and when it comes to the younger generation we always i don't know we we have a hard time connecting with the older audience or older generation of black people let alone other races outside of our age bracket and i feel like this show really connects with everybody as far as them getting the overall experience of the show itself <sighs> i hope all this makes sense i hope i'm just not rambling for those that do understand when i'm talking about the different subjects and whatnot leave your comments in the you know Leave a comment in the comment section. I'm so tired. I was supposed to do this video earlier, but I wanted to really think about it and digest every aspect of it. So hopefully this gets y'all somewhat of a my viewpoint on it. Sorry if it was kind of academic and wordy. I'm trying to I'm trying to work on being more clear cut and to the point. But it's hard when you're dealing with media especially in terms of books tv shows that's why i really don't talk about a lot of tv shows and movies because of how much experience i have in the field especially being a part of the background and stuff um it can be very uh hard to like condense all my thoughts into a cohesive video that's not like me that's rambling for hours or 30 or 40 minutes i try to keep it to kind of a 15 to 10 minutes if it's under 10 minutes it's great but if it's over like 25 it gotta be justifiable but hopefully i'll find i'm just doing a high take on this um i usually don't do this type of stuff but i feel compelled to like i said because it fits kind of the narrative of the things I talk about on my show, the different subjects and the different topics con concerning the black community. And so yeah, I'm gonna see y'all on the next one. I'm gonna quit talking.